Hi everyone, my name is Juanan. I'm from Caltech, and today I will talk about finite time analysis of asynchronous stochastic approximation in Q learning. This is joint work with Professor Adam Wierman, also at Caltech. Reinforcement learning has achieved great success in the past decade, and typically in the reinforcement learning, the procedure is that we first collect data that consists of trajectories of state, action, and rewards. We then apply some stochastic approximation-based algorithms like TD learning and Q learning, from which we can get value functions, Q functions, and policies. And in this process, stochastic approximation is the key. For example, stochastic approximation analyzes many reinforcement learning algorithms. Linear stochastic approximation on, is the underlying force between uh, under underneath temporal difference learning. A class of L infinity contractive stochastic approximation is behind Q learning, and a class of two time scale stochastic approximation is underlying uh, is the underlying method between behind actor critic methods and gradient TD algorithms. And an improved understanding of stochastic approximation can lead to better understanding of reinforcement learning algorithms. There are generally two schemes of stochastic approximation. The first scheme is called synchronous stochastic approximation. It means that there is usually a data set with IID samples of the state, action, reward, and next state, this sort of snapshots of the system. And this is typically implemented in an offline manner and is easy to analyze. It is well understood because of the IID nature of the samples. This stands in contrast to the more challenging class of asynchronous stochastic approximation. In asynchronous uh, stochastic approximation, it runs on a single trajectory of state, action, and rewards. And it is usually implemented in an online manner. Because the state trajectories is non-IID, it is typically much more challenging to analyze due to the non-IID nature of the stochastic process. In this talk, will provide the sharpest bound for the class of asynchronous stochastic approximation schemes. As a result, we also obtain the sharpest bounds for asynchronous Q-learning. And beyond Q-learning, our results on stochastic approximation also applies to other settings like PD learning with state aggregation and a multi-agent reinforcement learning setting. To start, let me introduce to you the class of stochastic approximation scheme under consideration. We consider a fixed point equation, fx equals to x, and here x is in Rn, and f is an operator from Rn to Rn, and f is a contraction in the infinity norm. The goal of stochastic approximation is to find x star, which is the unique solution to the equation, and stochastic approximation seeks to find x star without knowing f. To this goal, stochastic approximation runs on a trajectory of stochastic process, IT, which lies between 1 and M. And its update at each time t, only the ith entry of x is updated, while all other entries are not updated at all, is kept as the same as the previous value. And in the update for the ith entry, it is a weighted average of its previous value and some new value. And here alpha t is the step size, and it is also the weight on the new value. And this new value is essentially a noisy measurement of operator f of its uh, ith entry. And wt is a Martingale difference noise sequence. A special case of this general stochastic approximation scheme is the asynchronous Q-learning algorithm. And in asynchronous Q-learning, the stochastic process becomes a state action trajectory, STAT, that lies in the state and action space. In the updates, we need to replace x with the q function. As mentioned earlier, in the update, only the entry corresponding to the current state action is updated, while all other entries of q function is not updated and is kept the same as the previous value. Now let's take a closer look at the equation in the middle. In this equation, rt is the reward received at time t, and gamma is a discounting factor. 
This whole thing can then be written as a noisy observation of the entry of the F, F operator corresponding to the current state action. And in the special case of Q-learning, this F operator turns out to be the so-called Bellman optimality operator, and WT is a noisy is a noise sequence, and it's also a Markov difference sequence. In this case, the fixed point of this F operator is Q star, which is the optimal Q function for this uh, uh, finite horizon discounted reward setting, and therefore, uh, in asynchronous Q learning, it, it, it essentially finds the optimal Q function for the uh, infinite horizon discounted reward MDP problem. What I described to you is called asynchronous Q learning because at each time step, there's only one update for one coordinate corresponding to the current state and action. It is usually implemented in an online, man, online fashion on a single trajectory. This stands in contrast to another class, the synchronous Q learning, where at each time step, all coordinates are updated with IID samples from a, the F operator and is typically implemented in a more offline manner. Because of the IID nature, as mentioned earlier, the synchronous setting is usually easier to analyze and its sharpest rate has been achieved by Wainwright 2019. In contrast, the asynchronous setting is much more challenging due to the couple noise. Despite the challenges, there's also been a long line of work trying to understand it. In the early work in 2000, uh, in the last century, uh, the asymptotic convergence has been proven. And later there's been some analysis on uh, its finite time error, but this finite time error bounds features a exponential blow up in one over one minus gamma. Here gamma is the discounting factor and can be very close to one. This led to the following question of this talk. Is it possible to overcome the exponential blow up and can we actually sharpen the rates? We answer these questions in the affirmative. In our work, we provide a bound for asynchronous Q learning, which actually overcomes the exponential blow up. Further, our bound matches the sharpest rate in synchronous Q learning in Wainwright, and is also the sharpest known bound for asynchronous Q learning. Further, for this line of literature, some of the work can prove bounds for asynchronous Q learning because they prove bounds for the more general class of asynchronous stochastic approximation schemes. Whereas some other work only focuses on the special case of Q learning. In our work, we, we can prove bounds for asynchronous Q learning because we can prove bounds for, for, a, for the more general class of the asynchronous stochastic approximation scheme. And to the best of our knowledge, this is actually the first such finite time bound for asynchronous stochastic approximation. Now let's go to the summary of our results. Our first result is a finite time bound for the general asynchronous stochastic approximation scheme. And to the best of our knowledge, it is the first such finite time bound for asynchronous stochastic approximation with infinity norm contraction. We then apply these results to the class of asynchronous Q learning algorithm and obtain a finite time bound. And as mentioned earlier, our bound matches the sharpest known bound in synchronous Q learning. And there's also an extra factor that is due to the asynchronicity of the problem. This is the formal statements for our bound in the general asynchronous stochastic approximation scheme. Our first assumption is that the operator f is a gamma contraction in the infinity norm. Our second assumption is that the noise sequence wt is bounded and it is a mark of uh, it is a marking of different sequence. And our third assumption requires that the stochastic process must visit uh, 1 and n, one, uh, the set of 1 to n, uh, sufficiently often. This is satisfied when a process is an algorithmic Markov decision process. And under these assumptions, we show the following finite time bounds between the iterate xt and the fixed point x star. And this bound is an infinity norm. Due to time limit, I will skip the details. Uh, if you're interested, you can pause the video and see the details. But in the summary, this is the first finite time bound for this class of asynchronous stochastic approximation scheme to the best of our knowledge. 
We then apply these results to the special case of Q-learning. We show that the assumptions in the previous slide translate into the following two conditions. In the first condition, the word RT is upper bounded by R bar. Uh, in the second condition is that the trajectory is an algotic trajectory with stationary distribution mu and mixing time T mix. Both conditions are standard conditions in the context of reinforcement learning. And under these conditions, you can show that all the assumptions for the previous theorem hold, and you can apply the results in the previous theorem to Q-learning to get these following finite time bounds. And as mentioned earlier, our results can overcome the exponential blow up in one over one minus gamma. It actually also matches the sharpest known bound in synchronous Q-learning. There's an extra factor due to the asynchronicity where the denominator is the mixing time, which we believe is unavoidable. The denominator is mu mean squared, and this mu mean is the minimum probability in this stationary distribution. This bound is the represented the uh, sharpest bound for asynchronous Q-learning. And later, there's been some recent work that actually shows some improvements on this dependence on mu mean, which is very interesting. Next, I will discuss the ideas underlying our results. Our results actually rely on two ideas. The first idea is that we use a recursive error decomposition, which is very different from many prior work, and this new technique can sharpen our analysis. And uh, this idea actually also shed light uh, on why some earlier work can avoid, uh, can have the exponential blow up and why we are able to avoid that. And this will be the focus of the second idea. Let's look at the first idea. In the, our first idea, we essentially show that uh, the error at time t can be roughly speaking upper bounded by some uh, linear uh, combination of the error in the previous time plus some noise sequences. So this error decomposition essentially shows how the errors in the past affect error at the current time step. It is very different from many of the previous work which typically must divide the time horizon into many windows. And each window has to be very long and long enough such that every state action pair is visited at least once in this window. And after this is granted, they treat this as a synchronous update and then analyze the algorithm window by window. And by looking at the uh, error decomposition in a recursive manner, we are able to obtain a sharper rate and further, our analysis shed light on why some of the earlier work can have the exponential blow up and how we can avoid that. This is the main, the second main idea. Our recursive error decomposition shows that the convergence rate depends on a certain beta sequence defined as follows. If we plug in uh, the commonly used linear step size alpha k equals to h over k, with h being some constant, then we can show that by some simple arithmetic computations, this beta sequence, beta sequence can be computed explicitly. And our computation reveals a phase transition. When h is small, then this beta sequence will exhibit a exponential blow up. And while when h is large enough, then this exponential blow up is avoided. This actually explains why some of the earlier work will have the exponential blow up, because in this earlier work, H is set into B1, which falls under the uh, regime where the ex exponential blow up occurs. And we can actually avoid the exponential blow up by using a large enough H. And this is the key idea why we can avoid the exponential blow up. Now, let's return to our results. This is the summary of our results. Uh, we provide the first finite time bound for the general class of asynchronous stochastic approximation schemes with L infinity norm contraction. And then we apply this to the class of Q-learning algorithms and provide the sharpest bound for uh, asynchronous Q-learning, which matches the sharpest known bound for synchronous Q-learning with an extra factor due to the asynchronicity. Further, we have to mention that Q-learning is just one application of this general bound for stochastic approximation. And beyond Q-learning, there can be other applications. And this is an example. 
we show that our results can be also applied to get some bounds for TD learning with state aggregation. And further, we applied the techniques here in a multi-agent reinforcement learning setting. This, with this, I would like to conclude this talk. Um, my name is Guan, I'm from Caltech, and this is the reference of the papers in, in this talk. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the discussion session, and also feel free to email me for any further questions. Thank you for your interest again.